name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. <coughs> You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author and lover of peace, to know you is to live and to serve you is to reign. Defend against every attack those who are involved and who cry out to you. You crush wars and you cast down the proud. Be pleased to banish violence swiftly from our midst and to wipe away all tears so that we may truly deserve to be called your children through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Sarah. Like a fire there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as flaming furnace. His staff of bread he shattered, in his zeal he reduced them to straits. But the Lord, his word he shut up the heavens, and three times he brought down fire. His, how awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of God. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their powers into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai and at Horeb, avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord. So turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such. O Elisha, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels. By his mere word, during his lifetime he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power, Beneath his flesh was brought back to life. In life he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many eyes be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world and the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice and all the people see his glory. All who worship graven things are put to shame. The glory of things of not all gods will prostrate before him. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons, for which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples in praying, Do not babble like the pagans. Do not think that they will be heard simply because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you even ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, what in heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. This week I have uh, simply taped the masses for the week as our camera system is being installed in our church, and hopefully you'll get a new view of the altar when we start streaming masses next week, hopefully. So again, we will begin to allow the public in, and again, with safe distancing and masks, we hope that we will be able to celebrate the Eucharist once again as we slowly uh, reopen. I'm also going to be changing the times of the Mass, as you know um, by now. Hopefully, um, it will be published on the website, and also we're going to be getting them in the bulletin and in the and the letter that Kevin Woods has been sending out. So again, trying to get everything on the same page is not easy. But with the streaming, uh, masses were at 8 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 7.30. So it's kind of confusing. But um, again, I'm going to be changing my days off because my days off were not respected. On Tuesday and Wednesday, there was always funerals. And again, uh, getting away was impossible. I'm also going to be changing the Mass times uh, to 7.30 every day, Monday through Thursday. And we're going to be asking people to simply go to St. Michael's on Friday and Saturdays, except the first Saturday where we will hope to continue the first Saturday Masses in conjunction with Eucharistic Adoration when that starts up again. So there's a lot of change in the year, and again, it's just the time to do it all while we uh, sort of shut down. And as we start up again, and we have new um, faith formation schedules and processes and how to offer faith formation, we'll be at funerals that seem to be coming in on Saturday and weddings coming up now. Um, it just seems that we're gonna, I'm going to need more time to myself on Saturdays so that um, we can get in conformity with many of the other parishes uh, in the diocese. You know, it's very easy when a priest leaves and goes to another parish and when he comes in and he finds a schedule in place. Sometimes we try to fix that before they come in. I'm not fixing anything for somebody else right now. I'm fixing it so that we can be in conformity with something, should something happen to me. And again, also, uh, the regular schedule for most parishes is Monday through Thursday with morning mass. So I've never been able to get together with my priests never been able to get together with my family on the weekend because of the six o'clock mass. So I'm hoping just for the summer I can have a little downtime and again um, try to incorporate this new schedule and again allow me to do weddings and funerals on Saturday instead of morning mass. Most morning masses on Saturday are done in parishes that have two priests or more. So again, um, we are just getting in line with everything else. Again, it's only going to get worse as far as being able to have Mass because of the shortage of clergy. Uh, we ordain to, we have maybe 20 to 30 ready for um, retirement tomorrow. So again, we're not keeping up, and many of us are working beyond our years, but we're not getting younger. So again, as we take on more parishes, um, it's getting very, very difficult for a lot of priests. We want to preserve what we can as far as the priests. So uh, my schedule that I've changed is some, somewhat in uh, line with other parishes. And again, also uh, going to allow me to maybe help out in other parishes as they might be able to help me 
should I be sick? To be able to do mass at a different time rather than everybody having an eight o'clock and everybody having a 4 p.m. on Saturday. These kinds of things we have to start looking at on a diocesan level so that we can see that masses can continue as best we can. But it's never going to be the same again. It's never going to be the same again. So please try to understand that as we make this transition. Again, live streaming is just the norm now. And again, we are installing our cameras this week. And um, while I'm filming this for the last week on my computer, uh, the new system should be in. And again, like I said, public masses should again be available to a certain number of people on a daily basis at 7.30 a.m. So there's no more eight o'clock, there's no more Friday, Saturday masses. So again, we just ask that you visit uh, St. Michael's where they do have two priests and able to provide those kinds of masses. Um, again, to um, just, we'll just have to do a little more traveling, I guess, to make that happen, if you're a daily community. So please pray for me and pray for parish and all parishes that are undergoing some strain right now. And again, um, we will try to provide services as best we can. We hear from our readings today that the great prophets of Elisha and Elisha again uh, had left their mark. And one of the beautiful stories we heard the other day was the fact that one of the prophets left his mantle as he was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. And again, his cloak fell and it fell upon the shoulders of his successor. And in doing so, he was able to provide for his um, people that he was going to be leading the same powers and more um, of being able to do the ministry of his predecessor. And that's something we all like to do. We like to be able to leave a legacy of some sort, but something that can be built upon within reason. But all of us have the same gifts and talents. Elisha and Elijah were very different. At the same time, and taking on the mantle of leadership, they were able to provide some continuity, while at the same time uh, being open to different gifts that the new person had. So as we hear our gospel reading today, um, again, we are gonna be celebrating, uh, we just celebrated the body and blood of Christ, again, a great sign of our unity. And this is so radical um, to be able to, um, be able to worship God in unity. And again, it strikes at the world that is so divided right now in um, disobedience and civil disobedience, and again, uh, violence and uh, vandalism, again, are just not done by children of God. They're not trying to seek God's will. And again, we just have to continue to pray for them that they will be blessed. Some sense of wisdom, show some signs of maturity, show some signs of leadership themselves. But again, they were following the wrong people who were leading them to destruction and the ways of hell. So let us uh, see that in this prayer, the Our Father, which I've enjoyed even more so when I've seen people in recovery um, groups, again, whether Protestant or Catholic or Jewish, um, they come together in this one prayer. And again, it's a prayer that involves petition, it involves sacrifice and it involves all of the forms of prayer that we have in the church. Petition and intercession and again and just placing God where he belongs and seeking reconciliation with God and one another. One of the things that we see in this prayer, however, is that we um, ask God that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I wonder how often we really try to do that. And this is probably why there's conflict, uh, that we're not seeking God's will above all things and how the planet should work, how everybody should enjoy his blessings, how the creation of, provides for everyone. There's no need to hoard, there's no need for rich and poor. Everyone is entitled to God's creation. And we've created this mess ourselves as humans. Also, the lack of forgiveness that's going on right now, the violence against the respect for life, the, the ability to, for people to control and wipe out certain groups of society simply because they are in contrast to their selfish needs. Whether it be the unborn or the elderly or Catholics or Muslims or whatever it might be, just because they think differently, they think they have no rights. 
and that we have to conform one another to some so-called leader out there, and there's millions of them, unfortunately, which again only creates chaos. When we can put God back in the driver's seat, when we can take our rightful place, watching him drive the world, creating the world, restoring the world, when we begin to forgive one another, when we put other needs first instead of our own, then we will begin to see God's work and the benefits of God's work, the blessings of God's work, which so many of the previous generations did before them. There's never been a generation that's experienced perfect peace. We've had wars through the centuries, even in the time of the Bible. So again, it's just something that human nature is not capable of assuming by themselves. They need to return to God. God has to be a source of that peace, that forgiveness, that mercy for our sins against God and neighbor, and ourselves, and our reputation, and our country, and the, the, the blood that has been shared by our predecessors to give us this wonderful country of ours. To see these people just simply disregard the lives of so many people who put their lives on the line in battle, Anyway, whatever they're calling us to, we pray for them. And again, we hope God will give them some sanity and again, allow them to be open to God's peace. I am getting some strange messages on my screen, so please um, just bear with me as I try to eliminate them. There I am. Okay. So um, let us ask God to hear our prayer now as we pray for the church and its people. the Catholic Church throughout the world, that God will continue to guide us in bringing Christ's word and his life into the lives of his creatures. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, especially our own, may God guide them in upholding human dignity in policy and practice for even the most vulnerable and the marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are poor, hungry, or thirsty, may God show compassion upon the suffering and enliven the community to meet their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all souls and all who have died, especially members of this community, our family members, our relatives, and friends. May God and our enemies and those who have nobody to pray for them, let us remember them. May God grant them mercy and everlasting peace in his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pause for a moment and silence our hearts to bring our personal needs to God. Father in heaven, we ask that you hear our prayers that we have offered today. And again, may you give us the courage in leading lives of faithfulness in word and deed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, which you have given in human hands and made, and become this the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. This be one and one, and we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, food of the vine, and with human hands may become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My friends, pray that my offering and yours will become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Be mindful, Lord, that your Son, who himself his peace has destroyed our hatreds by his blood, look with mercy on our evil deeds and grant that to those whom you love this sacrifice May restore peace and tranquility through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
truly right and just, a duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom we made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. So now, with all the angels and the saints, we declare your glory with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gate. These gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. So remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. But it's through him, with him, and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give to you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may this peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those of us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant to us, O Lord, the nourishment and delights of this one bread that fortifies the human heart that we may successfully overcome the fury of civil disobedience and resolutely keep your law of love and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you to become, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. For the Mother of the Word incarnate despise not our petitions. But in thy clemency, hear and answer us. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning, and please make it a great day. God bless you.